Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the first two of these common scenarios where a limit fails to exist. Um, and then we'll look at the third scenario in, in a separate video because it's a little bit more complicated. Um, so the first one, we have a piecewise defined function, right? So we have a function which is given by a quadratic if x is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so let's mark... 1, let's say here. So when x is equal to 1, uh, we find that the value of f of x is 2, right? 1 minus 2 plus 3. So 1, 2. And we'll fill in that point because you'll see that when x is equal to 1, right, we have x equal to 1 is included in there, right? So f of 1 is defined. We can plot that point. Um, and that happens to be actually the vertex of that parabola. So if we were to plot it, we would have just half the parabola. So we'd have something like that, right? Um, intercept is at 3. 3, 2, 1, right? On the other hand, if x is bigger than 1, well then, well, we have the line y equals x, but we don't plot it when x is less than 1. We only start plotting it for x bigger than 1. And we have something that looks like that, right? So that's what, our, that's what the graph looks like. And, and if you think about trying to, to say something about the limit, right? If you say, OK, well, L is this number so that when x is close to A, f of x should be close to L, right? Um, but when we say x is close to A, we aren't, we aren't saying anything about, well, it's close to 1 and it's a little bit bigger, or it's close to 1 and it's a little bit less. We're just simply saying close to 1. So we could be on either side of that point, right? We can introduce this language of one-sided limits, but right now we're just looking at this notion of, well, x could be a little bit less than 1, could be a little bit bigger, and we have to consider both possibilities at the same time. And we can see that there, there's no way that you can possibly have a function which, um, you know, have a value L so that the function is close to that value, right? Because whatever L you pick, right, if you choose L to be 2 because, well, f of x is getting really close to 2 for x values that are slightly less than 1, well, then you're going to be off when you're coming in from the right. If you choose x to be, or if you choose L to be 1, right, then you're going to be off when you come in from the left, right? Um, you could try to split the difference, go halfway in between, but even then, right, when we say we can make f of x close to this number l, there's the question of how close, right? We want to allow for arbitrary precision, right? So a half might not be close enough. We might say, I want f of x to be within 0 0.00001 of l, and there's no way you can do that, right? There is no number that is within 0 0.00001 of both 1 and 2, right? They're a distance of 1 apart. The best, best you can do is halfway in between, a distance of 1 half from both. You can't get a distance any smaller than that. Um, so that's why we can't talk about a limit in this case, right? There is no common value. You can't be simultaneously close to both 1 and 2. On the other hand, we could have something like this function here. If you attempt to plot it, what you're going to find is that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And the graph of this function heads up towards that asymptote on either side. So we get something that looks like this, right? Um, so in both of these cases, we would have to say that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Uh, well, we might just write this, right? Uh, we'll abbreviate does not exist as d and e. Okay. And, and the reason it doesn't exist in this case is, again, if I'm looking for a number L, and I want to make f of x close to that number, right, and I want to consider values of x that are closer and closer and closer to, in this case, 1, right, this is, this is at x equals 1, right, well, 
the closer I get to one, the bigger f of x gets, right? And it's this idea of it grows without bound. There's no upper limit on how big I can make f of x, right? The closer I get to one, the bigger f of x gets. So whatever L you choose, if I go a little bit closer to one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be bigger than L. So you say, oh, let's choose an even bigger L. But then I go closer to one, and again, I'm bigger, right? Um, and, and, you know, so there, again, there's this issue of, it's not enough to just say, well, if I'm, if I'm close to one, and you define close to be, let's say, within 0 0.1 or something, and you say, well, look, if, if, if I'm at 1.1, 1 .1, Right, then, oh, then f of x is at 10, right? So, like, 10 is a good limit, right? But, but in the definition of the limit, you have to allow for the possibility that you're going to get successively closer, closer and closer and closer, right? And so, if you choose 0 0.1 and I choose 0 0.01, right, you're, you're saying 10 or 100, whatever it comes out to be, right? I'm saying 10,000, right? We can't agree on the value, right? Um, because the closer we get to one, the bigger f of x gets. And because there is no no well-defined value, no number, there's, there's no limit that we can assign to this, right? We might be able to say the limit is infinite, but we, uh, we haven't introduced that language yet. That's going to come later in the course.